John chapter 18, that's our, our reading uh, this morning. For the next few days, I want to read uh, John's gospel in regards to our Lord's crucifixion. Last week, uh, our time was spent in Matthew's gospel. And on Friday of this week, we're going to end our study in Luke 23 and look at Luke's gospel, Luke's account of this. You know, it, it's not really my intent over the next few days to, to draw attention to the differences or even the similarities of these accounts, while some of these things will be obvious. But but just to simply remind us again with his, uh, with a little repetition, uh, what the Lord has done for us. Um, we can't read these things or be reminded of these things um, too much. So John chapter 18, uh, I want you to read it uh, with me, please. It says, when Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the ravine of Kidron, where there was a garden in which he entered with his disciples. Now, Judas also, who was betraying him, knew the place, for Jesus had often met there with his disciples. And Judas then, having received the Roman cohort and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. So Jesus, knowing all these things that were coming upon him, went forth and said to them, Whom do you see? And he answered him, Jesus, the Nazarene. He said to them, I am he. And Judas also, who was betraying him, was standing with them. So when he had said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Therefore, he again asked them, whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus, the Nazarene. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these go their way to fulfill the word which he spoke of those whom you have given me. I lost not one. Simon Peter, then having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest slave and, and, and cut off his right ear. And the slave's, the slave's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, put the sword into the sheath, the cup which the father has given me. Shall I not drink it? So the Roman cohort and the commander and the officers and the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him and led him to Annas first, for he was father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. And Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was expedient for one man to die on behalf of the people. Simon Peter was following Jesus, and so was another disciple. Now that disciple was known to the high priest and entered with Jesus into the court of the high priest. But Peter was standing at the door outside. So the other disciple who was known to the high priest went out and spoke to the doorkeeper and brought Peter in. Then the slave girl who kept the door said to Peter, you are not also one of the man's, man's disciples, are you? And he said, I am not. Now the slaves and the officers were standing there having made a charcoal fire for it was cold and they were warming themselves. And Peter was also with them standing and warming himself. The high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. And Jesus answered him, I have spoken openly to the world. and I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together. And I spoke nothing in secret. Why do you question me? Question those who have heard what I spoke to them. They know what I said. And when he had said this, one of the officers standing nearby struck Jesus uh, saying, is that the way you answer the high priest? And Jesus answered him, if, you have sp if I have spoken wrongly, testify of the wrong. But if rightly, why do you strike me? So Anna sent him, bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. So they said to him, you are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. And one of the slaves of the high priest, being a relative of the one whose ear Peter cut off, said, did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter then denied it again, and immediately a rooster crowed. Verse 28 says, and they led Jesus from Caiaphas into the praetorium. It was early. And they themselves did not enter into the praetorium so that they would not be defiled, but might eat the Passover. Therefore, Pilate went out to them and said, what accusation do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, if this man were not an evildoer, we would not have delivered him to you. So Pilate said to him, take, take, take him, you said, take him yourselves and, and judge him according to your law. The Jews said to him, we are not permitted to put anyone to death to fulfill the word of Jesus, which he spoke signifying by what kind of death he was about to die. Therefore, Pilate entered again into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, are you saying this on your own initiative, or did others tell you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation, the chief priest, delivered you to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would be fighting so that I would not be handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not of this realm. Therefore, Pilate said to him, sir, you are a king. Jesus answered, you say correctly that I am a king. For this I have been born, and for this I have come into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said to him, what is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you wish then that I release for you the king of the Jews? So they cried out again, saying, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. 
I want you to read verse 37 with me again. And I, I want you to really take in what Jesus says here. Therefore, Pilate said to him, you, so you are a king. And Jesus answered, you say correctly that I am a king. For this I have been born, and for this I have come into this world to testify to the truth. And everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. May I ask you a question? Who is your king? Who do you serve? Who do you submit yourself to? Is Jesus your king? You know, Pilate responded to all of this in the next verse by asking the question, what is truth? And it got me thinking about another occasion just a few chapters back where Jesus would say in John 14 and verse 6 that I am the way, truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father, Jesus says, but through me. Jesus, he is the king of kings. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Through Jesus, we get back to the Father. Jesus is the answer. Jesus did this for us. He did it for you and he did it for me. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, Father, we are so very thankful for your love, for your mercy, for your plan to save us, Father. As an undeserving people, Father, we recognize just how unworthy we are, how gracious you are, and how wonderful you are, Father. We love you because you have loved us first. You have taught us what love is. May we love you. May we love others in manner that you have loved us. For your son's love, for his willingness to die for us, Father, we are so thankful. We recognize that apart from it, we would be lost. Father, we're thankful for answered prayers, especially right now. We're thankful that Brother Howard's tests came back good. We're thankful that there's no damage or anything wrong with his heart. And Father, we pray that in follow-up visits with his physician, that answers would be clear as to what caused the the pain to spark all of this, Father. But we're so thankful that, that everything is well as of now, Father. Bless him. Father, be with all of those who are struggling with various things. Father, we pray for those who might be considering obeying your will and being immersed in water for the forgiveness of their sins. Father, we pray that they would have wisdom and courage to do what is right. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.